Hi, I'm Brandon Neely from the Civil War Institute, and today I'd like to bring you along on my walk through the Gettysburg battlefield. Stick with me to the end, and I'll show you the evidence of a sharpshooter who was beheaded here. Today I'm walking along Sickles Avenue near Gettysburg's famous wheat field. As the weather here warms up, this is one of the best places on the battlefield to go for a walk and clear your head. Though I'm walking on the road at the moment, there are also plenty of trails that will let you fully get immersed in this town's history and natural beauty at the same time. Of course, if we were here on July 2nd, 1863, we would not be experiencing such a peaceful walk. Instead, these nice slopes and picturesque fields would have been filled with the fighting, the wounded, and the dying. The sounds of birds you're hearing in the background would be replaced with the groans of horribly injured men, the thunderous roar of cannon, and the cracks of rifles all around you. There is one regiment who fought near this location who I find particularly interesting, the 2nd Massachusetts Sharpshooters who fought here on July 2nd. Sharpshooters in the Civil War are fascinating to me for a number of reasons. First, they were so different from standard infantry units. Union sharpshooters often wore different uniforms than their fellow soldiers. They sometimes divided their regiment, working in various packs of three or four, and this division of soldiers led to interesting new tactics on the battlefield. Research by Dr. Roberta Seneschal de la Roche uncovered a New Jersey soldier who witnessed a second Massachusetts sharpshooting squad in action. Three sharpshooters would hone in on an opening in a barn or above a rail line fence, and the first would fire. The enemy soldier, hearing a bullet whiz overhead, would leap out, thinking that the Union soldiers were reloading, when the other two sharpshooters would fire and surprise the enemy with two more bullets. Captain Richard Thompson finished his description of the tactic by saying, Alas, how little we thought human life was the stake for which the game was being played. Situations like these, though, were not simply target practice. As historian Jonathan Steplick writes, the most dangerous service for Civil War sharpshooters came about when they faced off against their own kind, engaging in what modern military science calls counter-sniper tactics. So, though sharpshooters were distinct from other units on the battlefield, they still experienced death as both killers and killed. Second, their different experience of combat led to different ways of talking about sharpshooters. Though they had existed in Europe for decades, they were still relatively rare in America when the Civil War began. Especially early in the war, sharpshooters were considered with some level of disdain as less honorable and evil. For example, the artist Winslow Homer wrote that sharpshooters struck me as being near murder as anything I could think of in connection with the army, and I always had a horror of that branch. However, as Dr. Timothy Orr writes, that stigma eroded over time, and by 1863, both armies deployed regiments of sharpshooters to augment their fighting abilities. At Gettysburg, sharpshooters were present in both armies and had significant roles in how the battle played out. Two regiments, commanded by Colonel Hiram Burdan, were particularly important in changing the outcome of the battle. They also fully embody the distinctiveness which makes sharpshooters so interesting to begin with. I don't have the time to tell you all about them today, so instead I'll offer you an invitation. This summer, the Civil War Institute will be holding its annual summer conference. It's an opportunity to come to Gettysburg along with dozens of nationally recognized historians and learn about this battle on the ground where it happened. One of those is Dr. Timothy Orr, who I quoted just a minute ago, and he'll be leading an amazing active track battlefield tour, which will teach you about what Berdan's men accomplished here. It's an opportunity you can only find here at Gettysburg to learn about the men who fought and the places they fought on an energizing battlefield walk that takes you out of the classroom and literally into the trenches, surrounded by the beautiful wildlife I'm enjoying today. To reserve your spot at the conference and see this history up close, check out the link in our description or on our Facebook page. And the timing is perfect because I'm coming up to the monument for the second Massachusetts sharpshooters. It's one of the more realistic monuments on the battlefield, and I love how the soldier looks as if he's surveying the battlefield itself. But just as the sharpshooters of 1863 were in danger, so too is our monument of today. He has been vandalized a number of times, spray painted, and in 1991, a visitor to the park beat his head off with a tree branch, sending his decapitated head rolling down the hill. The paint has been cleaned off and his head has been reattached, but if you look closely at his neck, you can still see the scars from his attack. So there, I showed you proof of a beheaded sharpshooter and hopefully introduced you to some of the things that made sharpshooters in the Civil War so interesting. My invitation to learn even more about them and to do so with the experts in the field still stands. And when you come, take some time to say hello to our friend here and look at his neck for yourself. I'm Brandon Neely with the Civil War Institute, and I can't wait to see you here this summer.